Andres's energy is infectious. He brings joy to the music. There was an immediate connection with your orchestra. I just love his youthful energy. He brings the music alive for the audience. Bueno, tiene una pasión, Andres. Es eléctrico. Todos. Welcome as we unveil the Houston Symphony's 2014-15 series, the first season of the uh, brand new music director, Andres Orozco Estrada. Andres is here in the studio, he'll be here in just a moment and uh, we'll, we'll be doing a Q&A with him. So uh, whether you are in the studio audience here at the Melcher Center or if you're watching at home or watching on the web via uh, the Houston Symphony website or our website, you will get the opportunity to ask your questions. You see our uh, Twitter handle there at the bottom of the screen, so uh, go ahead and start tweeting. I should say that uh, before we actually talk to Andres, we can talk very generally to the CEO, uh, the executive director of the Houston Symphony, Mark Hansen. He is here. Welcome, Mark. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Been. Thank you. We'll talk very generally to begin with. This is a, a whirlwind time for the Houston Symphony. You're in the middle of your centennial season, and that's going to be followed by the inaugural season of this fantastic new conductor. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? We can hardly contain our excitement right now, both about the centennial season and the arrival of our 15th music director, Andres Orozco Estrada. He's such a dynamic, charismatic, passionate musician, a joy to work with. It's going to be difficult to keep up with him. That's for sure. <laughs> but a wonderful challenge to use his arrival to interact with the community and audiences in new, exciting ways. This really is the sort of the beginning of a new era, not just for the Houston Symphony, but also for the performing arts in general here in Houston. As one of our youngest music directors in our 100-year history and as our first Hispanic music director, Andres opened so many doors for the Houston Symphony to attract audiences of all ages from all parts of Houston. And we are trying to seize that opportunity by announcing his arrival in as loud a joyous fashion as possible. The Symphony each season does three series, the classical, the family, and the pops and we'll be talking about those uh, in just a moment. But, but generally speaking, give us a, a sense of what we might hear. First of all, it doesn't matter what your musical preferences are. The Houston Symphony performs something that you will love. For new audiences, we invite you to come down to Jones Hall or hear any of our community performances to enjoy the thrill of 87 world-class musicians performing as one unit. The first series that we're gonna hear about is the classical series. So uh, let's see what Aurélie Desmarais had to say when I sat down with her at Jones Hall. Aurélie Desmarais, Conducting Electricity. That's the, the title for this inaugural season for uh, Andres. Let's talk about some of the, uh, the outstanding concerts that he's put together for this season, beginning with Andre Watts and Rack 2. Yes, Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto, great barn burner, wonderful way to open the subscription season. Another thing that Andres has put together is three weeks of Beethoven, symphonies number one, four, and five. And this is part of a three-year, all nine Beethoven symphony cycle. That should be a great deal of fun. And he'll get to work with the symphony chorus. Yeah. It's something that is so exciting for him. He doesn't get a chance to work with choruses so often, so he's like a little kid in a candy shop and is going to be able to do two requiems, Mozart and Verdi. A big name that's coming that I'm sure Andres is happy to see 
Itzhak yeah. Perlman. Yeah, it's such a privilege to have Mr. Perlman come not only play, but also conduct the orchestra in Schubert Ninth Symphony. Opening night, pictures at an exhibition. There's yeah, a just a little piece. There's a bit of Mussorgsky. <laughs> yeah, it's a great show-off piece for the orchestra. And also on that uh, program, we'll be having British trumpeter Alison Balsam. What about some of the, the guest artists? We've mentioned Andre Watts and Itzhak Perlman, but uh, who else? Sarah Chang? Sarah Chang, terrific violinist. Garrick Olson, pianist. Uh, we have uh, so many fine, fine artists coming to work um, with uh, Andres. Including some members of the symphony, concertmaster Frank Wong, for example. Absolutely. It's so important to be able to not only bring guest artists from outside Houston and from the International Forum, but also to be able to really feature our unbelievably talented musicians, Frank Wong, concertmaster, and Brinton Smith, our principal cellist. And the Norton Sisters. Yes, Andres had actually worked with the Norton Sisters. Uh, they're a piano duo. Uh, over in Vienna and he was so excited by this uh, young American duo that he thought he would bring them to appear with him in the Mozart Concerto for Two Piano. Are there particular concerts that, that Andres is really looking forward to? For oh, example, yeah. I mean his opening at Miller Outdoor Theatre. Well, you know, that, that is so exciting to him because what he loves about the Houston community is how vibrant and alive and curious and excited people are. And uh, nothing better than to have a lawn filled uh, with people who are just enjoying the atmosphere, enjoying the music. And I think that that um, Spanish-inspired program is going to be just an absolute blast. Talk about Andres's new series, musically speaking. This is something new, something that he's bringing to Houston, to the Houston Symphony. Andres absolutely adores connecting to people about music, not only through his electric conducting style, but also being able to talk and have a dialogue and share. And so we have organized uh, something called Musically Speaking. There are going to be three Thursday night concerts at uh, Studi Concert Hall at Rice University that will feature just one symphony, a big piece, uh, Shostakovich 12, Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, Dvorak Symphony Number no. 7, and it'll be an opportunity for him and the musicians to play some examples, to get into the background a little bit, to really invite people into the, uh, the music at a deeper level, and I can think of no better host and tour guide than Andres. And he's also offering one of those musically speaking concerts in Spanish. That's right. With Beethoven's Fifth. Uh, not that Beethoven's Fifth sounds Spanish, uh, different, <laughs> no, but uh, the commentary will be in Spanish and uh, that will be in November uh, of, uh, also at Rice University. Well, a great classical series for his inaugural season. Aurélie Desmarais, thank you very much. A pleasure. And Aurélie Desmarais worked very closely with the man who has put this tremendous season together and it's my great privilege to be able to introduce Andres Orozco Estrada. Hi, nice to see you. Bienvenido, uh, welcome. Gracias, thank you very much. Hello. Andres, you were born in Colombia. From the age of 19, you lived in Vienna. So there are people all over the world who may be watching us via the webcast. I want you to look in that camera over there uh, and yeah. give them a few words of welcome. Buenas noches para todos. Un placer estar aquí, saludarlos desde Houston presentando la temporada, mi primera temporada como director musical. Guten Abend, zu allem auch meine Frau, die gerade schaut, meine Tochter auch und äh, ihre Eltern auch. Ich hoffe, die äh, werden auch genießen und die ganzen Leute, die in die ganzen Welt uns schauen. Das ist meine erste Saison als Musikdirektor und ich freue mich sehr, hier zu sein. I think you're going to have to work on that Spanish. Yes, a little bit. Yes. <laughs> I'm losing a little bit of Spanish, but this, why, this is one of the reasons why I'm here now. I was going to say, why did you want to come to Houston? Why did you want to come to this orchestra? It's a good question. You know, uh, being conductor is a little bit, or for me at least, is like an explorer. So you have to just start to uh, traveling around the world and discover new orchestras and new experience. And then I came to, to Houston like two years ago 
and I discovered this fantastic orchestra. Um, not only because they play uh, great music at a very high level, but the chemistry, you know, the, the way how the musicians, how everybody responds to my, my ideas, conducting on what I was rehearsing, was so good. So I felt at that moment this could be a, a great uh, something special. And indeed, I think like one month later, they asked me for, it, you know, take the position. It and all I said happened yes. happened very quickly, didn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. The very first concert of your very first season as music director will be the free concert at Miller Outdoor Theatre. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to start your season off there rather than in the concert hall? This, um, you know, I think, the, I'm sure that the Houston Symphony belongs to everybody, to every, every people, every person is part of the, of the symphony. So the best way to be in contact to the people is getting outside the theater and we have a great location there i haven't been there making music i just have a visit once and i have the feeling this is really something special there and i think the weather will be also very nice i think nicer than now at least <laughs> at least uh, more warmer and um, again we as orly said before we put together a very nice program and i think uh, my my goal is how when i came to this orchestra and i fall in love for the very first time i hope all the audience that are coming to this concert uh, in in outdoors theater, uh, they will enjoy and even continue falling in love with, with us and with the Houston Symphony. And with uh, you. Perhaps with, and with me, you. a little bit with me. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Something that we do want to talk about because it's a, a, a late breaking addition to the schedule that's mm -hmm. not even in the brochure yet. Yes. In May of 2015, uh, Lung Lung will be here and yeah. you'll get to work with him again. Again, yes, this is always amazing. You know, this is a great artist, a great musician, a great person. It's a pleasure. We did something uh, a couple of years ago. It was, uh, again, a very chemistry and we, we had just one rehearsal because he loves to work, you know, just one rehearsal, very uh, concentrated, very focused. And it was a great concert. So this time is again the next opportunity to make more music. And but now at home, as I call it now, yep. at home here in Houston, and with my orchestra and all together. So I hope everybody will fill the, the theater. Let's uh, move on to the uh, pops series. Um, people will get the opportunity to talk to you during the Q and A that's coming up. But now I sat down and talked to Michael Krajewski, who is the principal pops conductor of the Houston Symphony, and he told us all about what's coming up. Michael Krajewski, pops at the Houston Symphony is built around the idea of music you know and music you love. Well, our pop series here at the Houston Symphony is exactly that. We like to uh, present music that people are familiar with, music that people feel is part of their daily life or part of their life experience, uh, music that they hear on the radio, music that they've heard uh, on the movies, music that they've heard on TV, on the Broadway stage. Uh, we make that all part of the experience of our Pops concerts. Jason Alexander will be here, Tony Award winner, known from Seinfeld. Right, known from Seinfeld, obviously, uh, George Costanza, but probably people don't realize uh, that he started out on the Broadway stage. He's a song and dance guy, as you mentioned, a Tony Award winner. So we're looking forward to presenting him, uh, going, kind of going back to his musical roots uh, as a, as a uh, musical theater guy. And of course, I'm sure there'll be lots of great humor in that program as well. And talking of Broadway, Sutton Foster will be here as well. Sutton Foster, uh, today's one of today's great uh, Broadway stars. Uh, bringing uh, her interpretations of some of the great hits of Broadway. You can't get any better than that. We lost Marvin Hamlish recently, and one of the concerts, one of the Pops concerts, will be a tribute to him. Marvin Hamlish's music is just universally known. Uh, he had so many great hits, and we're looking forward to paying tribute to him and reminding people of what a phenomenal uh, musician he was, composer, and how many songs he wrote that have moved so many people over the past decades. And an interesting performance, the Paint Jam Concert Experience. This is something new. This is something very new, very innovative, and something we're not uh, quite sure we've got a handle on quite yet. But uh, Dan Dunn is this amazing 
uh, painter, artist, very creative guy. He will be uh, painting these enormous uh, canvases uh, live, fast, and, uh, and to music. And to music, choreographed to music, and people will see something that they've never seen before. It's uh, very exciting. Uh, it's a little hard to explain, but I've seen him in action, and I can tell you that it's going to be a multimedia presentation, the likes of which no one's ever seen before, because it's never been done before with an orchestra and to music, the way we're going to pre be presenting it. So uh, he is uh, a worldwide, worldwide renowned artist. He's been doing this literally all around the globe, but to put it on stage with the symphony orchestra for the first time, that's what we're going to be doing here in Houston. We're looking forward to that immensely. Marco Krzyzewski, thank you very much. My pleasure. There are some fantastic concerts on the Pop Series, as always. Mark, I want to talk about some of the, uh, the concerts that I wasn't able to get to with Michael. Um, in February of 2015, February 13th, in fact, right in time for Valentine's Day, I think seven-time Tony Award winner Bernadette Peters will be joining the orchestra. Sounds like a great date night to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's an amazing artist, and she'll be singing selections that span her multi-decade Broadway career. And she does have such an enduring appeal. I mean, she's on the NBC sitcom. Um, I forgot what the title is, but it is now. Smash. Smash. She was the mother of Megan, Megan Hilty, who just performed with the Houston Symphony. Yeah. Also, uh, in June of this year, Ben Folds of Ben Folds 5 and NBC's The Sing-Off. A very multifaceted artist. We've worked with him on one occasion before, and it was a night to remember. So we... Look forward to rocking down the house with Ben Folds and the Houston Symphony. I, he I heard that, that he actually smashed his stool onto the keys of the piano. Yep. Our, I guess that's the, the... Our stage manager is still talking about that. <laughs> 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 and on the December 10th of this year, uh, the Toyota Center will be the place to be in Houston because the Houston Symphony will be there with Andrea Bocelli. That's right. On a stage set up particularly for that performance, in front of only about 12,000 people. Always a thrill to work with an artist who has established such an amazing career that really extends beyond the boundaries of classical music. What does the orchestra think about getting to play in the Toyota Center? I think for all of us involved with the Houston Symphony, it's a thrill to see 12,000 people it's um, a little bit bigger than Jones Hall, isn't it? A little bit. <laughs> and I, I remember on the three occasions over the past four years that we've had the opportunity to work with Andrea Bocelli, looking up at the last row um, in the rear of the Toyota Center and just being amazed at uh, the faces and the excitement, the energy, as the Houston Symphony was collaborating right. with this fine artist. Okay. We still have one more series to talk about for 2014-15, and that is the Family Series. And to tell us about that, here is Associate Conductor Robert Franz. Robert Franz, welcome. Tell us about the Family Concerts. What are these concerts about? These concerts are great, really, because they're four events during the year um, that kids and parents and grandparents can come and enjoy the Houston Symphony, and everyone gets something out of them. They're really not just for little ones, although the, the themes are definitely geared towards them, but parents and grandparents constantly tell me, wow, we had no idea we'd love this as much as our kids did, so it's a real opportunity. And you wear costumes. I always wear a costume, and I never announce it before the first concert, even to the orchestra. So when the orchestra acts surprised at the 10 o'clock show, they really are surprised. They have no idea what I'm going to wear. African Safari is one of the uh, family concerts. Tell yes. us about this. Uh, so, so next year we have African Safari, which features the music of Lion King, and we'll have a student uh, high school chorus singing the Lion King. I love that music. Uh, we're also doing a Star Wars and More concert, so plenty of Star Wars music. And one that I'm particularly excited about because it reminds me of my youth, youth we are actually uh, commissioning arrangements of Schoolhouse Rocks. So we're going to bring our parents right back to the 1970s and our kids into a whole new world. I think it's important as well that the Houston Symphony does not just play here at Jones Hall, but you take the orchestra out into the community. 
It's part of our mission to bring music to every corner and crevice of the greater Houston area. And so each year the orchestra does over 25 free concerts as a complete orchestra, but we also take the orchestra out of the hall and bring it to areas throughout the community, including places like Sugarland and the Woodlands. In addition to bringing the full orchestra out, small ensemble solos, duets, trios, and small groups go out to over 150 places a year throughout the community. So for us, it's not just about people coming to Jones Hall, although we love to have people in our home hearing our music because it sounds incredible here. This is incredible space. But we also want to break down those walls and go out and, and perform throughout the community. Robert Franz, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Mark Hansen, uh, Robert mentioned these uh, community concerts. Tell us about uh, what these are and, and some of the series that the symphony offers. In total, next season we'll be presenting 25 free community concerts, full orchestra in traditional and non-traditional venues, including neighborhood concerts in June um, and December, and then our annual residency at Miller Outdoor Theater in June leading up to the July 4th spectacular with fireworks. And then on July 12th, we'll be um, opening the doors of Jones Hall for the second annual Day of Music, a free 12-hour event featuring two Houston Symphony performances and performances by 30 other community performing arts organizations. You said it's the second annual. Last year when you did it for the first time, there were, what, 10,000 people that came through? The centennial gave us the excuse to introduce some new ideas, and many of them have been so, so warmly received. We're bringing them back. Well, look, we've heard about all the uh, various series, and I know what people want to do is they want to talk to the man behind it all, Andres Orozco Estrada, and he has kindly agreed to answer your questions. And so whether you have tweeted, if you're at home watching television, or you're here in the studio with us and you've got a question, we will uh, pose them to uh, Andres. Let's begin here in the studio. You have a question for our music director designate. Yes, I understand that you, in making your career path choice, could not decide if you wanted to be a soccer player <laughs> or a conductor. Would you please share if that story is true or not? This is a, this is a good question. This, I mean, I, I see you have read all the magazines and all the, <laughs> the stuff. Um, this is trueish. <laughs> the, 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 th the story. Uh, indeed, when I was young, I started to play the football. If, even if you don't believe, I used to play the goalkeeper. So I'm not very tall, but it's what I wanted to be. And I realized being there, I was the goalkeeper and also the captain of the team. So I started uh, very, very early to con uh, you have this, this feeling to control. Um, <laughs> um, in the f <laughs> so playing the, the soccer was a little bit easier. Um, and this was maybe the reason why they decided to, this is too easy for me, so I need something a little bit more challenging. And in this, at some certain point, I have to combine the soccer uh, trainings, weekends, and also playing with the orchestra. So I, at some point, I have to decide, and finally, it was actually not a very hard decision to continue making music. Another question? Yes. Um, Voy a hablar en lo que he oído decir es la lengua de Dios. Buenvenidos a Houston, Gracias. una ciudad uh, internacional uh, muy diversa, que el, la comunidad hispana uh, crece siempre y hemos crecido con su familia. Um, ¿Qué es su plan en conectar con la comunidad hispana de Houston? Muchas gracias. Um, I will answer the question in Spanish. Okay. Is this okay? Sure. Um, the question gracias. I should say is, is, you know, that we have this uh, cultural diversity here Correct. in Houston and this growing Hispanic population. How are you going to engage that um, Spanish-speaking population? Um, and I will, I, I don't know why, but I need to answer in English now. <laughs> 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 this is very bad, actually. I should answer you in Spanish. I should answer in you Spanish. You <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, uh, the, the thing is, um, I just always say it is, I will, of course, offer, for example, some uh, during the concert, some explanation to the audience, or even we are planning, as Orly said before, uh, have one special project in Spanish. Uh, we are we were talking about uh, having some uh, pre-concert talks in Spanish as well. 
Um, but the thing is, uh, also the way to make the music is, I think, the end, uh, finally, the, the the most important thing. And this is what I I want to share with everybody, with the musician first of all, and then with the audience. So, esperemos que todo el mundo pues disfrute de de la manera de de hacer la música de la de la Houston Symphony. Para eso pues vengo aquí a, a entregar toda mi energía y todas mis ganas para para que la gente se una más a la orquesta y pertenezca más a, a la gran familia de la Houston Symphony. A quick uh, tweet from at Gloria Hand. Have you tried Tex-Mex food yet? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Not so much because, you know, the thing is when I'm conducting, when I'm working, when I'm on, on, on the podium, I need to take care about my stomach. <laughs> and uh, not, I'm, I'm not saying that the, tex, the Texas food is, 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 is bad for the stomach, but it's a little bit heavy. So I need to be used at first. And now, so I always pick uh, uh, this the Texan chicken, but I always ask with no, not so spicy. I see a little bit less pepper, a little bit less, you know, Mexican sides, more the American size of the Texans one. <laughs> and, um, but indeed, it's a great, and of course, uh, the, the steaks you offer here is, they are amazing. We Feed love, you for a wow, week. absolutely yeah. fantastic. Another question from the audience. Yes. Andres, when you are conducting, do you find that you have more freedom of expression with or without a baton? Ah, <laughs> good question. With or without the baton? Um, it's a very good question. I, I don't know uh, for sure, but uh, the last week, for example, uh, we were doing a program uh, with a small orchestra. We did a classical program with Mozart and Haydn, and because the orchestra were so not so big, were a little bit more smaller, like a chamber orchestra, um, I had the feeling I just want to be more part, really part of the whole of the whole group. So I decided to conduct without the baton, um, and I had the feeling it was it works very nice. Um, of course, when I when I conduct in a big big orchestra, it's just a very useful uh, you know element, a tool to communicate. We are almost out of time. I should say though that if you want more details about the 2014-15 uh, season, go to the HoustonSymphony.org. Let me say a very big thank you to uh, Mark Hansen and to uh, Andres Orozco Estrada. Muchas gracias. Gracias a ustedes. Thank you to you for watching this evening and buenas noches. <laughs>